Hey, awesome people. I'm so glad to have you guys here on my show today. My name is Dami and welcome to SOAX. So welcome to my show, guys. Today we're going to be making our own DIY track pants. Yes, we're going to be making track pants, not just a regular track pants. We're going to be making a trendy, awesome, I don't know, uh, uh, just a really, really stylish track pants because this has been a trend for a while now. And I kind of noticed nobody was doing any videos showing how to actually make these pants. And of course, you know me, I decided to make this for you guys because it's a really, really great look. It's part of the whole uh, athletic wear kind of movement where you wear basically leggings and gym shorts out like they're regular clothes. So this has been kind of part of the same trend and various designers, they've kind of upped the stakes a little bit by showing track pants with like studs and zippers and just really, really bold colors that you could style up and wear with heels or your or your sneakers or anything and you could style them up and down and they still look great and you could wear them anywhere. So basically today I'm going to be showing you guys how to make those pants. And of course we do need a couple of supplies and you know me, I definitely want to go into the supplies with you guys today. And the first thing we're going to be needed for a project, of course you want to get a nice Jersey knit fabric. So I got this fabric from Joann's. Yes, I love going to Joann's as you can see. Um, so I got this fabric from Joann's and you could get this from any fabric store. Really? You just want a nice, uh, lightweight Jersey fabric. This is a Ponte knit and I just love Ponte's because they're very, uh, medium weight. They're, they're not too heavy and they're not too light. So you want a very medium weight kind of fabric that, um, would really, really just look great as your tracksuit pants. Cause I mean, you guys can already feel or kind of imagine what the tracksuit pants fabric is actually supposed to look like. So from there, a really, really nice Ponte knit is a great fabric to use for this. And you could get any color. I decided to do my pants in navy color. You could do it in orange, black, purple, whatever color. It's your project, so just do it. Um, so yes, you want to get a really, really nice Ponte knit fabric and you want to get a really, really nice elastic as well. So my elastic is an inch and a half wide. You could get anything smaller, but I wouldn't advise anything larger than this because this is supposed to be the elastic that actually goes into your waistband. So you don't want like a three inch waistband. That just looks kind of silly. So I would advise anything from three quarters of an inch to an inch and a half waistband. And I know you guys know this, part of the track pants movement have been, you know, the symbol that actually identifies this as the track pants with the lines going across. You see that on Adidas and various fashion designers today. So we're going to be actually putting that uh, stripe or line or whatever basically is called the design detail on our pants as well. So we're not just going to keep it simple. We're actually going to add those elements. And for you to do that, you want to get a nice twill, uh, tape. So you could get these kind of tapes. Actually, I'm not really sure what these are called, but I saw them at the trim section at Joann's. They're, um, imagine the, 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 the kind of ropes that go on your backpack, those kind of zigzaggy rough ropes. These are what these are, but you could get any kind of thing that works and you think is going to work for your stripes. So I just got these cause they look kind of cool and it kind of serves a purpose. So if you're thinking of going maybe a little smaller, these come in different sizes as well. And you could also use like a twill tape. If you want to really push the Adidas kind of the skinny lines with different colors or black and white, you could lay this however you like. So I got this thick, I think it's also two inches. I got this thick two inches strip. That's going to go right down the side. Like you usually see in these track pants. And of course with that, I wanted to add a little, uh, pizzazz to mine. So I'm going to be laying a red strip going over mine as well. So, you know, it adds a little bit of fun and flirty and basically just my style, but you could add any amount of strips you want to, you know, all down the side of your track pants or even one or two or different colors, however you like. But I will be showing you later how to implement this or put this into your track pants later on in the video. And of course, the last thing we need that was actually a detail that I did want to put in my pants is a zipper. So we're going to be putting this at the bottom of our pants at the side. This is super optional. You don't have to do this. You could just 
you know, sew yours down to the bottom and just hem that. You don't have to implement the zipper, but this zipper allows me to open up at the side and, you know, just kind of look cute, fun, flirty, and the option of zipping it back. So you don't have to do this, but I'm going to be showing you guys later on in the video how to put the zipper. And with that being said, that's really all the materials we need. It's really not that much. Everything cost me about $25. So you could make this for $25 instead of go buying it for $60 to $100 at the store. And you know, it's your size. And of course, it's your design, so it's gonna look great and super gonna look banging. So now I'm just gonna shut up and stop talking and we're gonna get started with our project. So the first thing you wanna do is put your fabric in folds. So you wanna make sure that your fabric's actually folded in half. And now we're gonna be taking any leggings or tights that we have laying around. I'm pretty sure we all have leggings. So you wanna make sure to fold that nicely in half. So you could even put some pins there just to make sure that it's laying nice and neat. And you wanna put the straight edge of the leggings on the straight edge of the fabric an inch away from the edge. This is gonna be your seam allowance. So after this, you want to take your waist measurement and measure out the waist on the leggings. So if your waist measurement is about 28 inches, you want to divide that by four and whatever that number is, is what you measure your waist measurement to be. So now going to the crotch area, I encourage everyone to measure uh, a circumference of at least one leg. So the highest point of your thigh, you want to measure that and whatever that is, you divide that by two and this is gonna be the measurement of your crotch. So I would just add about two or an inch and a half uh, extra inches just so it, it, you know, it's supposed to be track pants so they're somewhat loose. So now moving on to the bottom of her pants, I don't want mine to be uh, fitted just like the leggings. I want it to at least be a little loose so I'm adding like three inches. So now we have the bottom point, the crotch area point, and our waist mark as well. So the next thing you want to do is connect the lines together. So now we're going to be connecting the crotch point to the waist point. And you could really just freehand this and follow the curve of your leggings. Or you could actually take the French curve and connect this point. So I want mine to be a little bit more accurate so I'm just going to take the French curve and just you know freehand this curve a little bit. And as you can see it's kind of following the curve of my leggings as well. And now when it comes to the bottom, we're also going to be following the curve from the leggings, which as you can see, it's basically going in a downwards direction. So I measured how much I'm actually uh, bringing out from my bottom and just kind of took that at the top and also, you know, just freehand it a little bit, making sure that it's a nice free and just slide curve. Of course, you wanna to proceed to also measure how long you do want your pants to be because the leggings are a little short. So you wanna measure how long you want your pants to be. And uh, the second point there is my seam allowance, which is an inch uh, seam allowance. So I'm just squaring everything off. Now we're gonna be adding our seam allowance, which mine is a half inch. But then when we come to the waist, uh, my waist, as you can see, the leggings already has a waistband, so I have to eliminate the waistband. My waistband is an inch, so I just took the same curve as my original waistband and I'm going to lower it an inch because I want to get rid of that waistband since we're going to be putting ours. So make sure to kind of dip the waistband just a little bit the line of your waist because this is our front so we want that nice curve so I just dipped it down about a quarter of an inch and then from there make sure to also add your seam allowance to the curves and uh, don't forget your size don't forget your bottom and you're pretty much ready to cut Now that we're done cutting, you could definitely take off your leggings from the finished pattern. And as you see before, it is unfold, so we want to make sure to open our fold up. So just make sure to cut down right the, down the middle. And now you have two of your fronts, basically. So now moving on to the back, it's basically same thing as the front. We have our bottom mark, our crotch mark, and the waist mark as well. As you can see, all the same measurements. But now this is where we're going to be implementing our zipper. And 
the zipper I was telling you guys at the side. And this is the band I'm going to be putting right there at the side seam. So I want my zipper to be going basically after the band. So my band is two inches, so I have to make sure that I create a seam in my pants two inches basically from the side seam. So I'm just measuring the two inches out right there as you guys can see, and I'm gonna create a seam right there in my pants. So that's the two inches right there. And as you can see, I have to add uh, an inch seam allowance because since I'm gonna be cutting down the middle, I need the seam allowance to actually sew it back together. So I'm just gonna be adding the inch to basically the edge of my pants. So as you can see, I added the inch right there. I'm adding the inch at the crotch as well. And I'm gonna be adding an inch to the waist. So this inch is actually the seam allowance is going to compensate for me when I do slash my pants basically in half. So when I take that two inches uh, strip away, this inch seam allowance is going to be compensating for me sewing it all back together. So go ahead and definitely, you know, create your curves with the extended one inch points. Don't create it with the old marks, create it with the new marks. So you wanna create the curves. And like I said, this part is definitely optional. So you don't have to do this part if you don't wanna do the zipper, but everything else just like the front, you could go ahead and do it. And like before, we lowered our waist to get rid of the leggings waistband, but we're not gonna be dipping in a quarter of an inch just like we did for the front. We're not gonna be doing that for the back. So now I'm just, uh, marking my two inch point all the way from the edge making sure that everything is nice and straight and from that you definitely also want to uh, mark out the length of your pants making sure that it's the same length as the previous fronts you did cut out and we're going to be cutting away the two inch strip just like this we're going to be cutting that away because this is where our zipper is going to go at the bottom of the pants and if everything looks good from here you definitely want to cut out your pants as well so now that we have our pants all cut out we're gonna be attaching the previous cutout two inch strips back to the pants so this is gonna give us the seam that I was talking about so we could putting our zipper so this part is definitely gonna be the side seams where we're going to be attaching this to the front so you want to sew that all the way to the bottom, but then leave about an eight inch opening from the bottom because this is where our zipper is going to go. So you don't want to sew that all the way to the bottom. So of course, then I proceeded to just sew this down on my sewing machine, as you guys can see with our opening right there at the bottom. And we're going to be attaching a piece of our front to the back. So this is the side seam. So we're going to be attaching front and back, right sides to right sides. And we're going to be sewing this on our machine. So now I've pretty much sewn everything down. As you can see, the opening is my back and where there is no opening is my front. Everything looks nice. And now I'm actually going to be laying down my strips. So this is where you could just go crazy and lay down your strips however you want. So as you can see, I'm laying down my strips, but I'm laying it to where it's basically at the edge of my zipper facing towards the back. So that's where my strip is going to stop. So now I put in another strip facing towards the front. So this is gonna be kind of a double strip going down the side of my pants. And like I said before, I'm going to be layering this red strip on top of both right strips as well. So now moving on to us uh, sewing it on the sewing machine. I actually have one of the strips pinned really nice and we're gonna be sewing both sides of the strip. So you want to make sure to have that laying really flat and nice, nothing is bubbling and sewing it down all the way down to the edge. So when you do get to the opening where the zipper is, you want to sew a little away, which is the seam allowance because that's where we're also going to be putting the zipper. So now I've pretty much sewn all my strips down as you can see and I went ahead to also pin my zipper down and we're going to be top stitching that all the way around the zipper as you guys can see it's made really really nice as well so i pretty much top stitch everything down as you guys can see i've pretty much sewn the strips on both sides and now we're just going to be attaching both sides of the pants together 
So of course I went ahead and just sewed everything together, left to right and front to back and everything together. So now we're gonna be sewing down our waistband. So you wanna put your fabric on fold just like before and I just measured my waist, basically half of the waist. So if your waist is 20 inches, you wanna measure 10 inches from the edge. So depending on how wide your waistband is, depending on your elastic. So since my elastic is an inch and a half wide, I need my waistband to be about three inches because it's actually going to be folded. So three inches plus uh, an inch and a half seam allowance for a top and the bottom equals four inches. So I'm measuring four inches wide and 14 inches long with my seam allowance. So now that everything is cut out, this is how it's supposed to look. And you want to just sew that on the sewing machine and fold it just like that. So make sure to also press it and uh, when it's sewn it should look something like this so I've sewn everything down and it's nice and pressed and it's an inch and a half on both sides so now we're gonna be pinning this to the waist of our pants so you want to make sure to just sit that really nice on the pants and you know if you need to stretch it a little bit you could definitely do that but you want to make sure that it sits really really nice all around the pants so we're gonna be sewing this down but you want to make sure that you don't sew it all the way to the edge so leave about maybe an inch and a half opening this is how we're gonna slide in our elastic so now that I've sewn this on the machine, I have that opening right there as you can see. So we're gonna be taking our elastic and basically feeding this through. You could use anything like pins or a stick or anything. Just make sure that you're able to really feed your elastic through. So as you can see, I was able to feed mine through and now it's still dangling. So to get the exact measurement of your waist, you wanna make sure that everything is nice and not too tight or not too loose and when you do that you could definitely cut the waistband and layer them just like that and basically just sew it on the machine just like that that i pinned right there so when you're done with that you could go in ahead and just close that opening just like before so i went ahead on my sewing machine and closed all the opening i surged it but you don't have to do that and for the bottom of our pants we're going to be hemming it just do a top stitch all around the bottom I surged it but you could definitely just fold yours twice depending on what kind of style you want and that's pretty much it So how did you guys feel about the project? I really hope you guys actually enjoyed making these track pants and I hope yours looks as banging as mine looks. So please do not hesitate to share your pictures with me on Instagram, tag me in any of your photos. Do not also hesitate to leave me a comment in any of my videos, in my previous videos, in this video. If you have a question about the track pants you're making and you just wanna run something by me, send me pictures, leave a comment. I'm definitely gonna reply you guys. So of course, because you love this video so much, do not forget to give this video a big fat thumbs up and please subscribe to my channel if you're watching and I will catch you awesome so addicts next week.